Welcome back to the This Week in Fantasy series. Today is everybody's favorite edition of the This Week in Fantasy series because it's the episode in which everybody still has a little hope. No matter how you think your team got drafted or the skill level of your team relative to your opponent, it's sort of like opening day in baseball because everyone thinks they have a chance right out of draft day and in order to properly judge this very tenuous and up in the air time in our league, I'm usually joined by the champion, the defending champ. Well, that's me, and I'm here, thank God, you know, the host. But I have two guests this time, two very exceptional old head players. Ben, the king of funny, who has been on my channel on many occasions on the Twift series, as well as Agony's Embrace and Elusive Smoke, my cousin Spencer, who's been featured on the Cheese Pizza series, as well as the Twift series. Benny Boy, how are you doing, man? Feeling a lot better after tonight's draft compared to uh, last year's draft, so not awful. That's very true, because if you guys remember, last year Ben was sort of pressured into drafting Aaron Rodgers after Patrick Mahomes went one pick before him, and I'd just like to clear the air right here and sort of try to move on from this and ask you straight up, Ben, what were you thinking in that moment? For some reason, I like reverted back to my... like first few years of playing and like I the minute the quarterback that I wanted was out of reach and gone I immediately started to panic and just was like I got to get the next best quarterback there is and and in, in my eyes that was Aaron Rodgers so obviously that wasn't true terrible pick and uh I, I deserve all the flack I get for it. it is a terrible pick there's there's nothing I can say to defend myself well obviously Lamar Jackson would go on to have sort of the top tier year as far as quarterbacks go that year or so you really got unlucky because Rodgers didn't even really have his average year he was a little bit off actually but I'd like to bring in our other host here who's been very patient very professional the man with the numbers the man with the formulas and the highest regular season winning percentage player in the league that's Spencer elusive smoke Spencer how was your draft and how are you doing man good well uh feel pretty good about my draft um you know uh really think it was amazing that i was able to get michael thomas and adams on the same team those guys should never be on the same team in any like standard or ppr draft for that matter so that was pretty cool widely considered the number one and number two players in the league as far as wide receivers go so i was just floored to see you get both those guys Let's go ahead and start a review of the teams. This is going to be the standard format of the first episode of the Twift series that you know and love, where you fast forward right to your team and you're mad when they get a B- instead of an A-. So let's do it in division order, starting with the first division, the Cursed Lands, and let's go ahead and just click on Game Center as though we were going to review the initial matchup since the first week is the division matchups It'll take us in division order anyway. So let's start with Lily and I. And let's just get me right out of the way, because I'm one of the hosts. And I'll sort of just hand it over to the King of Funny and Spencer. You guys can sort of go back and forth. I'm going to hold my silence since it's my team. I'm not going to do this, obviously, for the other teams. But you guys go for it. Just give me an incredibly honest assertion as far as what you think of my team. Don't hold anything back, please. Well, okay, so Ben, you take it first. I, uh, at first, I, I didn't really like it, but I do kind of see the, uh, I mean, the potential it really has because your running back situation, even though Le'Veon Bell is not what he used to be, him and Zeke together uh, with Kareem Hunt, I mean, I feel like there's I mean, a lot of good working pieces in your, uh, on your team, like with the running backs that you could easily move out, but you have, uh, yeah, Kareem Hunt, and uh, I think, I don't know, I just think that the defense, or not the defense, excuse me, the, uh, I think, I don't know, I I have such a hard time, actually, like, even making an opinion on your team, because I, I, on paper, on, like, by names and paper, I don't think it looks good, but for some reason, it 
it just strikes me as a team that's going to score a lot of points. Well, Spencer, jump in. What do you think about this squad? Ben's having a little bit of trouble verbalizing it because on paper there are a lot of big names, but it doesn't really give you a great feeling. That's sort of how I feel about it, at least. Yeah, the I think you have a weaker bench as kind of like my numbers dictate. It says not it's not perfect because it kind of overweights quarterback bench depth, which isn't like super useful. But you seem to have a weaker bench. You have like the tenth worst or tenth best bench, or you know third worst, depending on how you look at it. Though your core, your starters look really good. I have you as like the fourth best team, kind of by the numbers. Um, I think you, we can kind of see why, right? Like you really don't have a weak position until we like kind of get to flex. Like I think Bell and Elliott are both serviceable. I kind of actually have Bell as like one of my kind of sleepery picks this year. I've been getting him in probably too much best ball drafts that I've been doing. Uh, obviously, he got Breeze in like the ninth round, I think. Like, that's insane um, to get Breeze in the ninth. So that he's definitely serviceable. Um, I don't, I, again, like, I kind of like, who, who are you going to have in your flex? Like, is, is are you going to start Kareem and hope he gets you like five to ten? Like, are you kind of hoping one of these guys breaks out? Like, maybe you start Jarvis Landry. Um, the idea is that Samuel will be kind of inconsistent, but has some upside. So that's kind of my red flag on your team is you don't really have a ton of depth, um, and, but your core is really good, like one of the best cores in the league, and that's why you have a fourth ranking in my rankings for your starters. All so. right, but before we throw it back to Ben and get any more into this, Spencer, we re- for me. Yeah, I know, but we need to talk about your numbers here because I have a rocker. A, I have You're a, muted. My bad uh, production issue. That was very well put, Spencer. And by production issue, obviously, I mean I have shit for brains. But before we throw it back to Ben, we have to really talk about these numbers that Spencer has provided me. Now, in the past, Weston has provided me some head-to-head stats and some person-versus-person stats, which I've quoted and given him credit for. But this is the first situation in which we've seen some in-depth, analytic-like numbers fully shown on screen as opposed to just cited as though they were fed from a statistician. I have the graph that you linked up on the screen, Spencer, so can you please explain to maybe the newbie viewer what these mean and just give them like a TLDR of what they're looking at? As as for me as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so basically the, the kind of one of the best ways I found and I'm at, I play a lot of DFS and like the best way kind of to pull numbers and get projections is to basically pull in the Vegas lines because if those lines are out of whack, you have people who bet, you know, thousands and thousands and, you know, some case hundreds of thousands of dollars, not so much in player props, but you still have pretty big limits. So normally those are pretty efficient. So I kind of back into what they're pricing those in and those lines have the entry kind of baked into them. So for some of the bigger names, I do that. And then for some of the other names, like as you get to the bench, I kind of have to just guess based on rates and snap shares. Um, it's it's honestly not super scientific when you get to the bench, but for the starters, it's pre- I think it's pretty accurate, you know. Uh, and then okay, well, well, hold on, Spencer. What do the numbers mean? Is that just projected points for that position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I like for instance like. I think Bell Bell was one of the big guys who I thought was kind of falling below where I think he should based on his projection. And I was seeing, I think, his combined rushing and passing yards at like, it was like uh, 1275, and then I think he was like seven and a half touchdowns was like the prop on that. So you can kind of back into like the scoring for that, right? Something, I don't, I'm not being exact, but it was like something in that in that range. And so like based on that, like, He's got like a lot of upside, you know, relative to, to his, his draft position. So Right. So to boil this down for maybe our more newbie viewers, because the draft review episode is definitely an episode that gets more attention than say week eight. You know what I mean? By week eight, half the people are mentally AFK. So if we're looking at your bottom starter column here, those are the projected points. And if we look at the top rank column, that's where you project the people to finish, meaning you have yourself at 1 and Jackson at 12, which I'm sure many people will find very interesting. Can you sort of touch on rank and how accurate you think those numbers are? 
Yeah, so for the I, I would put a lot of stock into the starters column because this year I know there's a little controversy when I like throw out my attempt to copy paste it in the fucking uh the you know the little message thing, but here you can you get it since everyone actually has every position filled out. Like I feel like this is pretty accurate, and I just kind of plugged in the best player available into that, and. For the stars, it's it's more accurate, but some of the bench guys I have to do my own rankings for, so I don't have Vegas to kind of lean on. So those might not be as accurate. But and the other thing too is if if like one team has a quarterback on their bench, that quarterback is kind of inflating their bench. So I don't trust the bench rank. I do think it's kind of cool to look at, though. You know, it's just so something it, to it's consider. So, it's sort of like a, a rough estimate, more than a concrete for sure thing. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'd be willing to put any amount of money that it's going to be more accurate than NFL.com's, but it's still, you know, it's still a guess, right? Right. All right, so we'll use it as a tool moving on, but we'll review the teams in the same old school manner that you guys are used to. So we'll start out with Lily and I, and since we've already sort of touched on mine, I think that uh, if you guys want to give any, Go go ahead and give your closing thoughts on my team as far as a ranking. Let's go ahead and rank them on a scale from 1 to 10. 10 being the perfect team and 1 being an atrocious team. So both of you can give your thoughts in turn on my team and then we'll move on to Lily. I honestly think that your your team could, I mean, probably get to the Super Bowl once again. Um, it, it's pretty impressive. Like Spencer said, the, the starting lineup is really solid. Um, more questions at the the bench part, like he said as well. But I, I mean, I really do like the uh, it, it. As as we've talked about before, there's always the boomer busts, and I feel like they've definitely uh, like you've definitely got a lot more uh, boomers than you've got busters. You have a lot of solidarity on that team. Okay, so what so would I would probably it? give it a seven. Okay, that's a definitely above average solid score. Spencer, what are you thinking here, fella? This is the kind of team that, like, my gut tells me, you, you like you have like your ceiling is you you like win the Super Bowl again. You repeat back to back. But really, it, it I mean, you're the, in my rankings, I have you as the fourth best, as like I'm assuming is on the screen, um, which I think is about right. It's really going to come down to how you manage the wires. Like, do you get that guy that then is your, like your third flex to go with your re- really good one-two punch and your kind of running back, uh, quarterback, wide receiver core? Like, you know, help you get through bye weeks. I think your bench kind of needs some guys to get hurt right now. Like, you don't have, like, plug-and-play guys on your bench. So there's a lot of, like, things you need to, like, kind of hit your way and, like, you need to be active on the wires. But this is a good team. I would give it an 8 on a 1 to 10. Okay. So solid scores for me to open up the episode. I like to see that. And as the defending champion, I don't think you would really expect me to draft a team that was very poor. So... We can go ahead and move on to Matt Stafford and friends. Lily, who is the lone female owner of the league, the daughter of the commish, and she does in fact have a title at the expense of our handsome and talented co-host here, Spencer. So she got Russell Wilson very early. That's what jumps out to me, that she got Barkley with her first round pick, but then she reached for Russell. And this is a pretty top-heavy team in my eyes. What do you think about this one, Spencer? Yeah, this is a very, very strong uh, draft according to my 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 you know metrics for Lily. I mean, I like She's I said, I have second. her. Yeah. On oh yeah. Board. Oh yeah. I think if you look at my second graph, I think that that is kind of really key here, though. Can you? So this is turning very rapidly into like a math class. Will you explain this one, please? This one's super super easy. I basically have the injury likelihood of each position on a team. Low, right? medium, and high. Yeah, very. we're not talking rocket science here. I just kind of gave a ranking based on a, a website that does likelihood to get hurt. I think high is like over 50, medium is over 30, and then low is like below 30 or something. Something like It doesn't really matter. I, I, it's not my numbers. I just kind of dumped them in my sheet. So Kevin with, has the most injury-prone team if we just look at this at a very basic level. On a basic level, yes. But if you look, it's his like wide receiver two and tight end, right? Mm-hmm. If you look at it on like kind of thinking about it, Lily's even though Lily, high risk on her running back and flex, so it's actually more high mm-hmm. risk. 
Exactly. I think Lily, even though her raw projection is really high and some of the injury is baked into that, remember because the Vegas lines, people people tend to, if a guy's injury prone, that's baked into whether they're going to hit the over-under on the like, rushing yards and touchdowns, right? Right. But I think that, that if you kind of look at it, that comes down, you know, it's g- really girly is her first kind of high-risk guy, right? Mm-hmm. Her second high-risk guy is uh, is Mark Andrews, who's medium risk. And then Will Fuller, who literally has never completed a full season. And so has all had of those severe injuries in the past. Yeah. So good team. Again, high, high ceiling. I have number two in my rankings, but there's some question marks. And I just wanted to bring that up because I think for her and maybe for Kevin, that's very relevant to their ranking. Well, as far as question marks go, you have to look at Stefan Diggs in Buffalo and say that's an offense that focuses a lot on the run. When was the last time a Buffalo receiver was truly top tier as a number one guy that put up fantasy numbers? It's been a long time. So even though Diggs was good in Minnesota, I'm not super sold on him as a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, I I think what's interesting is I I thought that I actually thought number one and number two were some of the, and I don't think this every year, I think it was some of the best spots to draft with from. And I think her team's kind of a testament to that. You kind of were there for all the, all the key spots and she ended up with she feels like she's strong at every position but a lot of injury you know which will come into play particularly because a lot of a lot of times she's done a good job of kind of putting guys in from her bench but not always working the waiver wires like you know someone like Weston or Jackson so right Ben what's up yeah l- next. let's hear your thoughts here Benny boy uh, I I kind of like uh, a lot of spots on her team. Sorry, I was trying to pull up the lineup real quick for. Her. But I love her pick for Russell Wilson. I think he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league for multiple multiple years. Uh, so I re- so I really love that pick. But it's like uh, what Spencer and y'all were, you were saying the 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 injuries to the running back and the uh, flex spot are kind of concerning. Um, also, thank you for that. these graphs, by the way, Spencer, to love this kind of data. Um, but for the rest of her team, she does have some question marks to me. I don't know if Saquon is going to be as good as he has been, uh, was he was his first year. Well, and he was um, hurt last kinda, year, too. Exactly. So I don't know how he's going to perform in this third year. Um, Tariq Cohen as kind of a toss-up. Uh, Todd Gurley, I have no faith in whatsoever. Yep. Uh, Todd Gurley uh, is a guy who went from one of the highest paid backs in the league to straight up cut. His team had that little faith in him. So how much faith could you possibly show him? I, exactly. I don't know how you could. Uh, I, I do like his wide receiver situation, or excuse me, uh, her wide receiver situation. Because uh, I think Stefan could be that guy for uh, Josh Allen, that number one wide receiver that could be that I mean a huge wide receiver talent in in that city but I, I understand your skepticism on that uh, but I do love Will Fuller and Kenny Galladay uh, I, I think it's a solid team all around honestly a, a really solid draft by Lily would you like to dole out a 1 to 10 rating here fella I would probably say uh, another 7 okay Spencer what do you think rating wise for Lily I think it's a pretty solid team it's honestly, it's, I'd, I'd give it a nine. Wow. My, I think my only knock against it is, I don't know why she drafted Adrian Peterson, who's like literally going at like going to the Lions, who's got, who have like four running backs. And like, I, I just, it just felt like a wasted pick where there was other good stuff. But like, other than that, I love every pick. She literally sniped me on three picks. So like, I know she was, not that I'm like always right, but. Well, that's pretty much the highest compliment you can give someone as a fantasy owner. Like, I wanted that guy, and they took him from me right before I wanted him. Like, I mean, that's that's pretty much as much of an endorsement as you can give if you think about it. So, to me, this team is a solid seven and a half. I think that obviously we touched on the injury issues, but I do think that is a significant risk because when I look at a guy like Gurley, like yeah, he's not really going to be competing with many people in the backfield he's going to be a bell cow guy but 
with his injury history, he's one of these people you draft with one eye closed, almost knowing he's going to get hurt. So, to me, I see this team, and it has some holes. It has a lot of question marks as far as longevity goes. Yeah, the, to me, to me, her we- biggest weakness is going to be a uh, running back. I think Cohen is a very, very like good, like bye week type plug in. True. But I mean, Gur- Gurley's going to miss games. I don't think it's a question of if. I think it's just a, like how many, right? Like if Gurley misses, I think more than six games. I don't think she can make the playoffs unless she gets really lucky at the waiver wire pickup. I mean, because Peter like. Maybe I'm way down on Pearson, but I like Pearson's a non-factor. So like she might as well just ha- have an empty roster spot. As well, far Jesus, as even if he gets touches, they don't run anyway in Detroit. So what is a 40-year-old Adrian Peterson gonna do? Yeah. So so if if like Gurley stays healthy all year, like she probably's in the Super Bowl, like minimum. Like she really strong team, you know. And then I I, re- I really like Robbie Anderson and Crowder. Those were two guys I I was looking to target i think that they both carry tremendous upset i mean i'm pretty sure robbie anderson is like wide receiver one for carolina dj like yeah good good point but like they're pretty they're pretty like i I could see his he could be 150 160 guy and she got him in like the 11th round or whatever 12th round so that's a good good pick I'm not as high on Anderson as you. I've always viewed him as a guy very similar to Sammy Watkins. Boomer bust, huge gamer zero. That That's true, but I mean, I think he had like 140, 150 points when Sam Donner was healthy most of the year. And I think Teddy Bridgewater is more talented than him. And I'm not saying like, oh, he's a sure thing, but I, it's not crazy to see him hitting like 160, 170. 170, which would be amazing for like bye weeks and stuff. And if Will Fuller goes down, I could see... Robbie Anderson being a real stalwart of her team. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I definitely think he's solid depth. And I think his seal, his, uh, his floor is lower than it has been in the past with a guy like Bridgewater. Bridgewater, I yeah. mean, he's not going to shit the bed. It's, it's almost like his M.O. is a person. Like, you're going to put Bridgewater in, it's not going to be a disaster. It's probably not going to be great, but... You know, if you have defense, first team, or a very running back focused team... It could work. And is I, it- I think of I think of them like I guess DJ Moore is probably like Adam Thielen, like more underneath stuff. Yeah. And then Robbie Anderson is more like Stefan Diggs, like was for deep. the Vikings the last two years. Deep threat, vertical threat. If he gets that bomb, he's gonna be like twenty points plus for the week. And he's not gonna get it every week, but when he does, you know, he's gonna be good for a lot of points. That's a great analogy. I'm very interested to see how Carolina does this year with Bridgewater at the helm. I was never a Cam Newton guy. I thought he played very selfishly. That was evidenced by the play in the Super Bowl where he fumbled it and didn't want to dive after it. He tried to do the move that Ben did to me like a hundred times when we were kids where there was a fumble and he just tried to like kick it away and dive after it. This is in the fucking (laughs) Super Bowl. He's like his own 20. He's trying that shit. I mean, Bitch move. I, I saw that and I was just like, yeah, like that's not a franchise quarterback. You've got like Cam Newton's a real tough son of a gun running quarterback, almost like a, a bruiser, like the way he's built. You've got like pasty pocket white quarterbacks like Rambo diving after fumbles. It's the goddamn Super Bowl, Cam. You can't be kicking after balls and running, but I was never a big Cam guy and my opinion on him really soured in that moment. So I'm honestly sort of rooting against him in New England, and it would be nice to see the Buffalo Bills win a couple divisions out there in the East. You uh, think you might have mic issues again. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree completely. I, they kind of remind me in terms of profile as like those old Kansas City Alex Smith teams where they, oh, have, yeah. like, they have like a McCoy top-tier running back who they run a lot of stuff through. Obviously, McCaffrey's more talented than uh, McCoy was, um, but th- they just, I just don't know if, like, I, I think Teddy profiles like Alex Smith, like he's a game manager, you get a really good defense, you could probably win a Super Bowl kind of like Joe Flacco, but like, I just, I think that they probably have a pretty safe floor, like six, seven wins, and, but I think their ceiling's capped, I think they're like a 10-win team, right, like, I just don't see yeah. them managing to win more, like literally managing, like managing to win more games than that. Cause I don't think they're like 
going to blow you away offensively. I think it's just going to be like nice, safe, consistent stuff that adds up over time. Agreed. I think we can move on to one Johnny football, please. Weston's team to continue with our analyzation of the first division, the Cursed Lands. And here I see Daniel Jones right out the gate. A guy coming off his rookie year who just consistently turned the ball over and it seems like a very high risk pick to me. Yeah, I think I I don't didn't talk to Weston about this, but about Daniel Jones in particular, but I know Weston's a guy who's a big proponent of streaming quarterbacks, so I think that was kind of his game plan. I think he was maybe targeting quarterback at specific rounds and kind of hoping that guys fell to him, and then when they didn't, um, he was kind of like, oh, well, I'll just sit back and, and, get, and gain depth and really gain a very deep team. And I think I think that this is a very deep team from Weston. Um, looks really deep from front top to bottom. Standard Weston. Very deep. Weston's, I feel like, is a guy who historically drafts very – deep and has always valued depth above like peak performance and in this league change depth for peak performance even whenever teams have a lot of weak points so to me it's always an interesting dichotomy you got guys like Weston who are always around 500 and are in the hunt and you have teams like Christian a lot of times or Lily who have a lot of holes and they can never seem to get anything done and whenever I look at this Weston team, it's solid overall. I don't like the quarterback. I don't like the running back, too. But other than that, it's very good. Both the receivers are solid. Kelsey's top tier. Boyd is a guy I expect to improve with Joe Burrow. And overall, this is definitely a solid team. Benny Boy, let's hear your thoughts. I think this is one of the more solid teams uh, in the league right now, just based off of these draft results, because... I, and like you said, I don't like the quarterback uh, position at all. I don't like Daniel Jones. Not enough to him to be starting at all or even be my backup. But I I think there's just so much depth. Nothing like really uh, eye-popping, but there's just a, a lot of good players. So, I mean, Kelsey, Jones, Allen Robertson. I like the Cam Akers pick. I like Tyler Boyd pick. I like the Edelman pick at seven. I mean... There's just a lot of uh, interchangeable pieces here that he could work with, as we know Weston's pretty good at doing. Yeah, Weston definitely one of the top flight managers in this league. I don't think that's really debated by anyone, only one with two Super Bowls. And if you are going to say that, yeah, he's going to stream the quarterback, it's not going to be Jones the whole way, I don't really think that that is that much of an excuse. Like, okay, he's not going to ride Jones the whole way, but... Is he going to start Ryan Tannehill? I mean, if you look at the other teams in this league, there are probably six like exceptional quarterbacks that you can pencil in for a very good performance. And Daniel Jones is not one of them. This is a guy who I think if you look at all the quarterbacks in the league that you would consider starting, he's the highest risk. He had so many turnovers last year. This is a guy with no pocket awareness, a fumble machine, a young guy who will force it into pressure. And to me... When you're going to start a guy like Daniel Jones, it, it almost doesn't warrant the disaster potential for the upside. Because Daniel Jones' upside is not that high, if you just consider the risk factors, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not a huge Daniel Jones fan. And I think in this league in particular, with the way people draft, I actually I don't have a good metric in front of me to pull this up. But I'm just assuming that some teams have three three quarterbacks <laughs> like like normal. So I feel like streaming is harder in this league than is in like a traditional league. Definitely. Because people will sit on three quarterbacks the whole year. Like they'll never drop them. So you basically, on a normal league, maybe only half the people have two quarterbacks, which means, you know, that plus people not having three. You basically have six to eight more streaming options every week, right? Which is like pretty nice but it's like this arms race to like sit i feel like you're almost it's almost advantageous to sit on quarterbacks just because the streaming options are so shitty because everyone else is doing it which is like kind of weird but plus it's just something an, i've noticed about this league plus it's an in or excuse me injury riddled position as well so you can never have too many good quarterbacks 
I, I would I would argue that it's it's not right, relative to wide receiver and running back, but I mean injuries are still possible, right? Like at any position. That's fair. I always think it's interesting how stylistically the Watsons very obviously prefer to prioritize backup quarterback more than the usual player because historically they have been the group of players if you were to just divide people up whether it be by division or family or whatever they love their backup quarterbacks and they frequently would reach for a backup quarterback in the draft compared to what a lot of people would consider doing Def- definitely i uh yeah, going back to Weston's teams, I feel like we, we, we got off topic. I, I I mean, I think he'll be able to figure out quarterback. I mean, even with the thin options, there's still multiple guys I still like, which I'm sure is his mentality. I feel like he's a touch weak at running back. I mean, like, I think, I feel, I know Cam Akers is like, oh, he's getting the, the reps, but like, that could easily be a timeshare where no one's good. Um, and so, like, then he's banking on figuring out the Lions timeshare. Who who knows? He's got this Dobbins guy who, I don't know, like maybe he beats Ingram out. And then he's got Moss. who may, I mean, when bye weeks come, and I, he's active, so this is kind of something we probably shouldn't be worried about. But I just feel like he's really thin at running back. Like, I mean, most people are other than, like, Christian. I know drafts a ton of running backs, but, like, I think that'll kind of hurt him, you know, down, down the stretch, in addition to the quarterback thing. Does anyone think that Derek Henry is going to have a good of a year as he had last year? It's kind of impossible to have as good as a year as he did. It's well, it so you could say the same thing for Mahomes last year when I asked that question, and you and AB were both like, hell yeah, oh, he's going to throw 51. Fuck 50 touchdowns, throwing 51. Oh, hell yeah. And uh, if it wasn't for that goddamn injury that he had that took him out for a week or two, he might have done it. That's funny. But definitely Henry can't live up to last year, though, right? No, I do not think so. I, I think he'll still be really good because that's that's the Titans' M.O. Uh, under Verables to run the Pound ball it. a yeah. lot. Old yeah, and, and, I, and looking at his numbers last year, just staggering how much they used him. So I think that's going to take a toll on him a little bit this year, but I still think he'll put up uh, solid numbers, just not anything close to last year. What do you think, uh, Spence? Okay, so really, really big piece that like we didn't bring up. Deion Lewis is gone. He's like that's huge. He, he was on the like Deion Lewis would regularly play third third downs for the Titans, and so that means that Derrick Henry's gonna be on the field even more, right? Because now wow. they don't have D- Deion Lewis to, to come in. And on top of that, one of the biggest knocks against Derrick Henry is that he, he isn't a receiver. So he all of it's just pure rushing, right? Well, one of the things he mentioned this offseason and some of the newest reports out of camp are he's really working on his receiving out of the backfield. So if he if he's on the field for more third downs and getting receiving yards... I, I, I think he can probably match his performance from last year, in which I think he probably got a little lucky on the touchdowns. Like I don't think it's don't don't think it's realistic to expect him to get twelve or sixteen again. I think exactly. He got. So like, but I think he picks that up on the receiving side, and so it's about the same, which is still amazing. I mean, two two seventy out of a running back is solid. Yeah, and to me, a lot of his equity comes from his guaranteed use rate. Like, there's no situation, even if they fall behind, in which the Titans are like, all right, we're going to run the spread. We're going to air it out. It's 14 to nothing. No. They're going to give Henry the rock, even if they fall behind. So that's, to me, like a lot of what makes him consistent and a valuable pick. Yeah, and another noteworthy thing is Weston's team carries, like, the least injury risk in the league besides Mark's. So... Very little injury risk. Like all the guys I have projected is not getting hurt, which is kind of, kind of nice for him. Cool. One other, th- one other thing about his team too is like we were talking about the quarterback. Is that if you look at the waiver wire, there's so many options that yeah. Weston could use. So I mean, deep. it's it, yeah, it's so deep, and and I mean, a, a new a person new to fantasy football could figure out how to get a decent quarterback out there. So, I mean, uh, let alone Weston, who's a, a masterful manager. So, 
I'm sure he's going to be fine. And, and if he does find someone to slot into that quarterback position and produce just serviceable numbers, I mean, I think he's as a seven and a half with the potential of being a nine as a team uh, if he does that. Yeah, I mean, you got at least like three solid QBs out there on the wire, so. And Tua. I think, it, I think compared to some of the other teams that are more complete, I think I'm more like six and a half. Um, I, I, but it's, it's like tough. Cause like, I know he's going to manage well. I just think that that running back position is going to be challenging for him to solve. I really don't buy into cam acres. And even though like there are serviceable quarterbacks, I mean, I think about someone like, like Jackson who like he, he gave up other positions, but I mean, his, his quarterback's going to get like probably 25 to 30 every week. Right. Yeah. Lamar. Well, well, I mean, I think if West got, 15 points out of quarterback, he'd be ecstatic, right, the rest of the year. Yeah. I give this team a seven and a half. I think that it's obviously very deep, as we touched on. I'm not a fan of Akers. I think you reached for him. But you've got Julio, Allen Robinson, Kelsey. That's three number one threats. Henry guaranteed to get the ball a lot. You know he's going to manage well. It's really hard to give Weston anything lower than like a six and a half, even if you were critical of a lot of these guys. So do you want to move on? Yep, let's go next. All right, you went some and you loot some. The we, the uh, recently Christian changed name. I just call him Sea Gouge, basically, forever and always. So he got Wentz, obviously, due to the gimmick name, and... To me, Wentz is not very impressive. Speaking of not very impressive, Kenyon Drake has never been a guy who's blown me away. Josh Jacobs is a relatively inexperienced guy. So the top part of this team doesn't really impress me. Ben, what do you think about this team? Uh, I, I like his running backs. I mean, uh, or other than uh, with Hines. But I, I really do like Drake and... Uh, I think Josh Jacobs is going to have a great year this year. I could be wrong, but I I really wanted him this year because I uh, I'm pretty up on him. And David Johnson and uh, and playing for the Texans is an interesting. Uh, it's a, yeah, it, it shakes up that offense a little. So I'm interested to see how he does as well. I think he could produce some good numbers for Houston. Uh, and I, I and then I think his wide receivers are just as solid with DJ Shark. Uh, Amari Cooper, and then the always consistent King, Larry Fitzgerald, also having A.J. Green as well. So th that's one of the best wide receiver uh, groups I, I mean, I've seen so far. Um, so I, I really like this team uh, for C. Gouch. It's, it's a very rare, good draft for him. I think if you look at the bench depth with Green and Fitzgerald, here are two guys that were top tier in their day and could potentially be solid veteran options. And whenever you look at the current receivers, as far as I'm concerned, Amari Cooper is tier one. He's not going to really blow you away like an Adams, a Thomas, or a Julio Jones, but he's just unequivocally a very important target and the top guy in the Cowboys offense. He stylistically works very well with Dak Prescott, and he's a consistent route runner. He's a guy that gets 1,000 yards pretty much every year. This is a guy that's very hard to miss on. Now, as far as missing, I don't like Chark as for uh, Jacksonville. To me, this is a really high-risk pick. People were really high on guys like D.D. Westbrook last year. And Jacksonville, their offensive pieces are very, very risky. Yeah, yeah to me, Ch Chark is like... It's like a, a throwback to old Sea Gouch, right? Like, because I think this is kind of a weirdly like normally, you know, with Sea Gouch's drafts, it's like high risk, you know, high ceiling, high low floor, right? This is actually there are definitely some risks, but like a lot of these guys are very very safe, right? Yeah. Um, which is kind of weird because you know we normally associate Christian drafts with being really risky. Um, I really don't like a lot of his bench guys. But I, I do like his star, starters. David Johnson is one of the guys I was hoping would kind of slide under people's radar. The player props are really, really high on him. And, you know, Bill O'Brien's a guy who, like, loves riding his backs. And they gave up a lot. They basically gave up DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson. I don't, 
and I know it wasn't like a straight up thing, but like it kind of like those were the big pieces in the deal, right? Like I have a really hard time believing that they don't ride David Johnson and Bill O'Brien's a guy who like will give the like he'll give a, a lot of on the ground looks. He'll also like throw out the backfield some. So like he like David Johnson. I don't think he's gonna go back to that year that he was a world beater. But he for like a fourth round pick or whatever he was. I think he he could do work for a uh, for, for old Gouch. What do you think about David Johnson, Benny Boy? I I, I really like like him. I mean, I I think he was a good white or running back for. Cardinals for years until injury problems popped up. Um, and Spencer's exactly right. I mean, he was kind of the centerpiece for Texas in that trade. Um, and they're probably going to ride him for uh, all the money that he's worth. And, for I mean, as far as fantasy-wise, that's one of the greatest things I can hear. So I uh, I really do like the pick. Interesting. So... If we're taking a look overall at Seagouch's team, I feel like usually Christian is a guy who will take the big name. He'll take the flashy receiver, the Odell, the Gronk. And this year we see the opposite. We see a more con- safe, a more safe, consistent running back style with the Josh Jacob pick, with the Drake pick. And it runs contrary to the style that we have become accustomed to from Christian so Christian got second last year and overall I think he's sort of becoming one of the more feared owners in the league notice I said feared and not respected but (laughs) I'd just like to really get your guys' thoughts rank wise on this Christian team I think that uh, if I had to give it a rating I'd probably give it uh, an 8 because I know that y'all have some disagreements on some of the guys that I like because I love Shark and I like some of the uh, the other options that he has but I, I think that this is one of the more solid Seagouch teams that we're going to see uh, I mean since he's been in the league. Yeah, agreed. I think it's his best draft ever kind of building off that that I've ever that I can remember because normally he has like gaping holes at position Yeah, at certain positions the only bad thing you can say about it is I, I'm not in love with Wentz either, but he was the eighth highest quarterback last year. You know, he's one of those guys that just I think there's some injury risk too, but like there's tons of options if Wentz doesn't work out. And, uh, and even if he doesn't, he has so much depth because he waited so long to get Wentz. So yeah, I I, I disagree with the depth comment. I think his depth is kind of weak. Um, I, I think you do. I, you don't like I Green think, and Fitz. I, I I guess I'm I like I mean those like Fitz is like he's like a like a worst case scenario bi week plug in like if you're, like what is he gonna get you like five points like eight to twelve maybe you don't think no you don't think he, he's gonna he, finish he, with like one forty one twenty this season I mean he's only had over over twelve one time last year and it was week one like he's, he's, he still has three solid wide receiver options with Shark Cooper and Green. No, I, 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 I have nothing wrong with his starters. I, I think that Green is injury prone. Well, one of those has to be a bench player, or, or one of the running backs that he has has to be a bench player. Oh, I, I mean, like I like, I like his his starting core. I just don't like his bench. I don't think Larry Fitzgerald is that great of an option. I don't like Lazard that much, and I like, I don't buy into Green being healthy all of a sudden. I think he's gonna get hurt or like have a toe. I mean, he's been hurt like two years straight. I feel like. Um. I don't know. I, I just feel like once wide receivers start getting hurt, they have a lot of issues. I mean, if he's healthy, I mean, he could easily be great, right? Like, but it's it's also a rookie quarterback. Who knows if there's growing pains? Bengals don't have the best offensive line. I mean, there's a lot of question marks there. That's all I'm saying. I mean, he could be great, but I like those are two players, you know. And I don't Gerald, know way more cons- consistent than I think that you give him credit for, though, because he. And I know that's what everyone always says, that he's just like... He also, like, part of that is he got bumped from their, their like... Number one to number two. No, Kirk, Kirk, uh, Christian Kirk is their number one last year. So now he's, like, a number three, but he really isn't because Drake is kind of their number... Like, he's just, like, he's not, like, they have a ton of weapons. And I just... 
I don't think he has upside, and like he, I think his floor. He really wasn't it, all that great last year. If you look at his numbers, he had a lot of yeah. like five. No, but I, I, I think he does offer consistency and doesn't just give you zero points like some some players do, especially wide receivers. To me, I like I, I sort of he's, especially with DeAndre Hopkins. With a guy going to be guarded by the number one corner. Well, with a guy like Fitz, I want to walk my statement back of like, oh, it's ten or twelve points. Like that was five years ago. What Fitz brings to a team is veteran presence, stuff that doesn't give you fantasy points. I think that's his greatest contribution at this point in his career. Honestly, he had, he had a stretch last season for like seven or eight weeks where he didn't break like seven, like, <laughs> and he regularly was dropping like sub two points, like. During that stretch, like you're better off just rolling the dice with a boom bust wide receiver, in my opinion, which you can find on the waiver wire any week. So saying like Larry Fitzgerald's depth is like I think I don't think that that's a true statement. But he never busts. He always has some s- sort of output, even if it is just five, six. So can you define what seven, you, eight like? Points. What do you call a bust, Ben? A bust to me would literally just be like a performance of two to three point points, four points. I mean, if so you he, get he did solid, that more, eight, he, he busted eight, more points. often last year than he succeeded then, and he's a consistent guy who lacks a ceiling because he only that, had the, like over that 10 was last year. Players. He's worse I mean, this year. His situation is worse. There's more options. Eh, the, I think they're going to be throwing the ball around a lot with Kyler Murray, so I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities for all those wide receivers. They threw it around a lot last year too, though. Yeah. All right, let's. They, look, they, I think we've. I think we've. We're, we're getting way too high up on Larry Fitz. Like yeah. he's a. So, uh, he's a depth I, I would piece, give. But, yeah, what do you think about that? Best draft ever from, despite the lack of depth, is like starting lineups really solid, kind of weak special teams kicker, still really great draft, and like who the hell knows? Those are like coin flips anyway. So I love the starting lineup. It's the almost the second best team, uh, and I think since he has less injury problems. Then Lily, it probably should be the second. It's just I have a raw projection, right? So we'll say second best team to make Christian happy, and we'll uh, we'll call it like an eight point five. Really oh. good draft from him. Do you know who? Do you know what Ku's first name is? What's that? Young Ho. <laughs> that's pretty good. It's amazing. Young I, Ho. I, and he's Korean, so you gotta love it. Uh, probably like the cool. only Korean player in the league, right? I think so. Probably in history. Not in history. I bet there's been like a linebacker or something that's Korean. All right. That's true. Benny Boy, rate the gouch. Oh, yeah. I already said uh, – oh, no, I haven't said anything yet. I, I think he's a uh, an 8. I agree. I give him an 8 as well. To me, the thing that stands out to me the most is the stylistic difference with which Christian selected his players. It's just run contrary to what we've seen from him for nearly a decade. So – before we move on to the next team, I want to get a division winner prediction from this first division, the Cursed Lands. Gonna have one. to go with the reigning champion from last year, uh, you. Okay. And uh, I think Christian and Weston, especially because uh, I think Weston has a lot of potential with this team, especially with his management. I think Christian and uh, Weston could apply some pressure and maybe get one of the playoff spots. Uh, but I, I, I have you locking up the division again. To me, this is a tough division. This is a solid division all the way through. What do you think there, Mr. Elusive? Yeah, I'm glad I'm not in that this division uh, this year. This uh, is the toughest division, in my opinion. Like I think everyone had a good draft. Mm. And then even the person who I think had the worst draft is a good good, good manager. Um. You know, and he didn't even have a bad draft. It just like wasn't in the top, you know, four. Uh, I that's it's so tough. Am I factoring in like management or like as if the teams are like the the, here? the question is who will win the division, not oh. if these rosters get played for fucking fifteen straight weeks. It's who's going to win the division? I'm absolutely disgusted to say this, but Uh-oh. I think it's the gouch. Yeah, I think it's crazy. It's the really gouch! Crazy. Oh, Spencer's picking but the gouch. What a day to be alive. It's like, I'm like, it, like, I could be unbiased about the rankings. Like, he was bad last year by the rankings. He's good this year. And then I think, uh, I think Weston's management will narrowly edge him out over 
over you, and I think Lily comes in third because I think her injury, I think her really injury prone guys get hurt, and I think she doesn't manage the depth well. But it's like going to be neck and neck, and I think I think that wild card comes out of this division. I'm like pretty sh- pretty sure actually. Nice. So things to note: very strong division. Probably going to have a wild card if not competing to the wire, then coming out of this division. Overall, very difficult. I'd have to agree with the sentiments of someone in a division. I think this has been a low-key, tough division. I think Lily being like the girl and the youngest one, she gets underrated a bit. And Christian being like sort of like a bumbling buffoon and a loud mouth. He's actually improved a lot over the last couple of years. And Weston's been very good. And I've sort of proved my merit and gone from you know considered like average to solid or even good in a lot of people's eyes i think so consistent yeah this this division is solid it's nothing to sneeze at let's go ahead and move on we don't want this to be a three-hour episode but we can move on to clap four and Jameis's crab and go that's the commissioner and spencer and i'll open this one up with clap four he got Watson. He got Ingram in Baltimore. Run happy offense. He got C Mac with the first overall. Tyler Lockett, the Seattle Seahawks first receiver. A guy I was really looking forward to trying to target. He snuck in and took from me. Chris Godwin on a very hyped Tampa Bay offense. Ingram, a guy who gets red zone looks. Deshaun Jackson, an old name. Robbie Gold on a high powered offense and the Ravens defense. So this is sort of the broad overview of Kevin's team. And Spencer, I want you to just delve into this and tell me what you think. Yeah. Uh, by the numbers, I mean, it seems like a decent team. I mean, he's got, like, Christian McCaffrey, which is very good. He definitely has some holes, but, I mean, like, Christian McCaffrey can outscore for those holes. I think what do I have him by the numbers? Have him sixth. So in the in the top half barely, um, he kind of I felt like I don't remember where he drafted him, but I remember thinking like there's a lot of quarterbacks to reach for, and I thought Deshaun was extremely reached for, um, maybe the most reached for quarterback in the draft. I think I, he took him in the maybe like was it the second? It was either the second or third. Or early second or, uh, or sorry, late the, second, early third. It was the first pick of the third round. Yeah. So, he, I think that's kind of reachy. I think he needs to, like, wait another round. So, like, you can kind of see that in, like, some of the bigger holes that I think. But still, I mean, like, Lockett and Godwin, really good wide receivers. McCaffrey, even though I'm not super high on, on Ingram, Ingram's still serviceable. So, like, really solid core. Evan Ingram could be okay. His depth is kind of awful, but I think that, I like I that Christian Christian Thompson is really interesting pickup because remember Fournette was cut, right? So it's so it's between Chris Thompson and then uh, I think Raquel Armstrong uh, when he comes back from he has COVID, so I think he'll miss a week or two. But it's between him, so he like I could easily see him being like a serviceable flex, um, solid kicker defense, but these a normal clap for a team like. Nothing in crazy, but like a solid team. We'll do damage. I really like the Brady and Gronk backup. I think that's like high risk, or uh, excuse me, like high reward, low risk. Because in a lot of teams, I think this year, and not in our league specifically, but in fantasy overall, you see a lot of thirsting for Buccaneers players. People are really greeting after Brady, really drafting those weapons early. And I think Kevin getting them as a backup, both of them, is the proper move and strategically sound. Ben? Yeah, I really like uh, Kevin's team when I look at it, like just at the name, like all the names on it, because, I mean, they're all recognizable for the most part and have been good fantasy players for a long time. But, and I really do love the Brady Gronkowski, yeah, excuse me, Gronkowski backup uh, situation he has as well. But, if you looked at a, the injury graph that Spencer provided, th- he does have uh, some high, high risk, especially as we know with Gronk as the backup, uh, high risk to injuries. Uh, so 
was it with four having high risk? Yeah, one being the wide receiver and one being a tight end. So he does have some some risk there, and I don't. And Spencer noted that he doesn't really have much depth. So if any of these uh, injuries kind of go the wrong way for him, which they very might well could, uh, it could turn into a, a bad season for him. So. And to use the Spencer injury chart that he linked me, we would like to point out Kevin does have the most severe injury risk of any other team. So, oh yes, f- excuse me, five, not four. To me, this- I think I think it is noteworthy though that like three of them like are on his bench and guys he probably won't be playing too frequently. So, I think sure. it's really more like two severe, but in, both in his starting lineup, right? Which only Lily has two severe in her starting lineup besides him. Overall, I think this team is solid. I look at this team and think that it's above average, it has a lot of threats, and this isn't a team that I would face and sort of shrug off and say, like, oh, this is be a win. Like, this is a team with some significant weapons. Ingram gets a lot of red zone looks. Deshaun Jackson's a deep threat. Gold is on a good offense. The Ravens have a good defense. Lockett's the first option. Overall, very solid team, and I honestly think I'd give this a nice 7. Yeah, I would give it a seven as well. Spencer? Seven and a half. Um, like I said, by the numbers, I have him as the sixth best team, but as you can see, his bench depth is pretty bad. and uh, I, I just really think that one of his big high, high-risk high guys is going to go down. He's going to have a hard time filling the, filling the gap. So. All righty. So now we'll move on to Spencer, and I want Ben, you and me, we're going to sort of lead the way on this one, and then Spencer will give us thoughts after. Sounds good. All right, so he took Cam Newton, which to me, yeah, running quarterback. Everyone knows, obviously, running quarterbacks, very powerful in fantasy football because of the way the rushing yard translates. But I've spoken at length about Cam already, not a fan of him. Miles Sanders on a Philly offense that doesn't run a lot. He isn't a guy that I really trust in any capacity. Jonathan Taylor, who I'm, I guess is a rookie. Do you want to fill me in here, fellas? Jonathan Taylor, a rookie for the Colts? Yes, he is. And he's going to be competing with Marlon Mack, right? Correct. Okay, so not feeling good about that. This is when the jaw drops. Adams and Thomas. You see that? You shit your pants. It's terrible. It's awful. It's terrifying. Mm-hmm. It sends chills down your spine. <laughs> That's sort of what I had last year with Thomas and Jones. You got those two guys. Because here's what's scary, Benny Boy. The floor is 10. The ceiling is like 35. These motherfuckers can get two touchdowns easy. So this is the backbone of Spencer's team, and it really carries some real punching power with it. To me, And he also has Gallup, too. Yeah. And if you look, I, you know, when we were drafting, Aaron, who of course is in this league and we're going to be reviewing very soon, said, and I, I'm quoting here, Michael Gallup is one of the most overrated receivers in the entire league. And I couldn't disagree more. I really like Michael Gallup. And even though C.B. Lamb signed with the Cowboys, first round pick, I still think Gallup will be a solid number two option. Yeah, and I think that they're going to let Dak throw it around a lot this year. Yeah, uh, more than usual. So, uh, I think there's gonna be plenty of options for Gallup, and they have, and like after those first two of Adams and Thomas, having like such a solid backup like that is, I mean, it's pretty good. But I, I really uh, like his quarterback situation because there's so much potential. Uh, I, I, with, I mean, I love Cam Newton. I don't know how he's gonna perform with, in New England. Uh, especially uh, uh, with the Patriots. But I think Phillip Rivers is a really, really amazing option because I think they're going to, if if I said they're going to let Dak air it out, I think they're going to let Phillip Rivers' arm fall off uh, in Indy because I think they want a gunslinger like they did when they had uh, you know Manning uh, or even close to Luck. Uh, so I, I really do like uh, Phillip Rivers' um, just a, a solid, solid team all the way around. 
Yeah, to me, this is a team that looks solid. And whenever I take a look at it, obviously I spoke about the receivers, but this isn't really one of those things that can be overstated. These guys have some real jaw-dropping power. They're on two high-powered offenses that pass a lot, two Hall of Fame quarterbacks. These guys are going to get their numbers. And consistently between them, they're pretty much never going to get less than a touchdown a week. One of them will always score. And that's so important when you have a receiver. The Bills are on the rise. I love the Bills pick. Uh, to me, this is a solid team. Ben, I love the points you made about Rivers. I think Rivers was sort of in like a, it was like a bad relationship. Like you're dating like a shitty girlfriend. Like that was Rivers in San Diego. Like it just wasn't working out. He needed to move on. And he did move on. And I think that T.Y. Hilton could have a surprisingly big year actually. But overall... Yeah. Even though this is a strong Spencer team, the lack of running back depth makes me rank it a little bit below an 8 at a 7.5. Yeah, I, I'm still going to go ahead and give it an 8. Uh, even, even Despite of the lack of running back depth, because I think that there's some really good options there. I mean, he, he has 6 on the roster. Uh, so, I mean, and knowing Spencer, when it comes to uh, analytics and knowing the right decisions to make it, uh, lineup changes i think he can manage that pretty well and uh, um, manage some good uh production from that position so agree i still give it an eight to me it's very tricky i've been doing these pre-draft ranking videos for nine years now and it's so tricky to factor in the owner ability because on some level i know spencer's going to have his shit together and he's going to be very active on the waiver wire top tier waiver wire guy he gets the obvious guys. He gets the low-key guys. He's very dangerous on the waiver wire. So, him and Weston. Yeah, him, Weston, and Jackson, I think, are the three best waiver guys. But whenever I consider these pre-draft ranking, I sort of sit here with my dick in my hand and go like, hmm, well, do I rate this team and consider the fact that Spencer is basically going to be like a net plus two in terms of his managing ability and its ranking? Or do I like rank it as though it was anyone else's team, knowing that it's going to get better. So, yeah, I said 7.5, but I expect this team to make the fucking playoffs. And with those two receivers, it's really going to be difficult to overcome. And those are my final thoughts on Spencer's team. And Spencer, you've held your silence like a very patient, pious nun, and you can let it rip with all the coat posting and excuses you want. Let's hear it. Daffa. No, uh... My my big thing, I was I'm super high on Cam. I was reading some of the stuff that Bill Belichick said about him, and like he was talking about how like playing against Cam was like one of the most challenging things he's ever done in his whole career, like game playing at defense. And I think of like Carolina really like sucked at running Cam. Like I felt like their offense like at times they would kind of figure it out, but like I. I think if anyone can unlock Cam, it's Bill. And, like, I could be wrong, in which case I just plug and play Rivers, who I like. You know, obviously, sounds like Ben likes him too. I think he'll be serviceable at worst-case scenario. I agree. I I hate Miles Sanders, but it was, like, third-round pick. And I had, like, some some leagues I was playing in, he was going first round. I'm not saying he should, but, like, I, Philly actually runs it a lot. It's just normally they do timeshares. Um, True. So he's a dual threat. He gets receiving. Seems like a serviceable guy. Jonathan Taylor, I kind of think that was my worst pick of the draft. I think I kind of reached because I didn't really like anything around him. And I kind of saw his ADP was about a round off. But I, I'm i not high on Mac. And if this guy's talented, he could win the job. It was like a fifth-round pick, I think. So not too bad. Mostart was the hot hand at the end of the year, but that could end up a timeshare. I mean, honestly, all, I'm, I'm not going to go through these, but like all these guys are just like guys who look like they could get a start but have red flags. And I'm just honestly hoping I get one or t- two of them healthy and I can you know plug plug them in along Sanders or Mostart and then like flex Gallup. Hopefully one of my tight ends ends up being like top top ten. You know, I like defense and kicker. Not too much. I don't want to ramble on about my team, you know, talking about how great it is. But that's kind of my thoughts. And getting Adams and Thomas is insane. Like Agreed. Well, th- Spencer, those, are, those put- guys should have been first-round picks, like both of them. Thomas should have been fourth, 
fourth or fifth overall probably and like Adams should have gone like 10th or 11th so that's insane and it has to do with all the quarterback reaching agreed well put your money where your mouth is you have yourself ranked number one in these pre-draft I'm drafting using the numbers that I spent like (laughs) hours trading of course I'm going to be ranked number one well that's what happened why would I even put them together that's what happened last year too and you had your first losing season so I just want to know if you're ranking number one in your own rankings, then you have to be like a nine or a nine and a half or even a ten, right? If you have the best draft, presumably. Yeah, I think it's a nine. I think that my Taylor pick was was kind of bad, but that's I think honestly, I don't like obviously everyone probably thinks of their own draft. That was my own like mistake. I think looking back, I think I should have gone with another a guy who maybe doesn't has have, have as high of, of a ceiling, but maybe a lower floor guy who. A guy who may looking more certain to get the job, but I mean it could work out. Who knows? Mac is nothing special. Very unimpressive in my opinion. Agreed wholeheartedly. And one last point I wanted to say about your team was I really do love uh, your starting tight end Austin Hooper. I think that's a really solid pick. Well, whatever happened to uh, Najoku for the he's, Browns? He's still on the team, but they gave Hooper so much that it's like pretty likely. There puts out a camp where the Hooper was getting like red sun looks and stuff. I don't know. So Najoku's a backup now. Basically. All right. So I, we're ready to move on. I don't want this to be fucking six hours long. Yep. All right. So we have AB's team. We're going to go ahead and review this one. <laughs> and and uh, you can lead us out here, Benjamin, since he's your roommate. And I want to hear your thoughts on his first real draft because this work league was a joke. So let's hear it. Yeah, he they did PPR. So this was his, this is his first time in an actual uh, standard league. Actual league, that's um, not 180 to 190 games. Coin flip nonsense. And where you get three points for your players playing at home. Yeah, but home it's home field <laughs> advantage. ESPN. I can't believe it. That I digress. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't either. Enough said, honestly. Uh, I, I honestly, uh, there, there's some things I like about Austin's draft, but it's obviously he he picked off of names more than uh like name brand players than he he did than he, uh small smaller players or rookies, uh other than Clyde Edwards Hilaire, as we all know he's we're both Chiefs fans, but uh he homers out a lot, especially with this team with four Chiefs. But he got some good ones with Sammy Watkins, McCall Hardman, Tyreek Hill, all three wide receivers for the Chiefs, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but he also has the running back, too, for them. So I I, I think that is good if the Chiefs uh, are successful again this year, which they probably will be. But there's a lot of – there's sometimes you lose games if you have too many players on your of the same team on your uh, roster or your lineup – just because if they have a terrible performance and get shut out or only kick a field goal for the entire game, four of your players basically just you know busted for the, the entire week. So uh, he's going to have to be careful about that. But other than that, I love the Kyler Murray pick. Uh, the Keyshawn Vaughn pick I think is going to be solid as well, even though there's going to be some uh, competition in the backfield in Tampa Bay. And I don't know how much they're going to use uh, Brady to throw. Uh, love the Juju Smith-Schuster pick as well. I think he has a, a, one of the best wide receiver groups in the uh, in the league. But I think where he suffers uh, is, his, is his running backs and his lack of depth. Yeah, off year for Juju last year, even though uh, Roethlisberger blew his elbow out. But you think he can recover? A lot of people speculated his downfall was due to lack of Antonio Brown. Uh, I don't think that's the reason. I think it's because he actually uh, had to deal with three quarterbacks being used in a season and two of them being pretty uh, terrible. So, yeah, I I don't put it on him at all, even though the Antonio Brown thing is valid because that does, you know, save, uh, save you from having to go against the number one guy on the team. But I don't think that's the reason at all. To me, this looks like a Seagouts team from four years ago. A lot of big names, a lot of boomer busts, receiver heavy, running back light. Spence? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I remember I was like so confused because I like 
the way I had my projections set up, like as we were drafting, I was plugging in who people were picking, and I like kind of had to manually place them. Like, oh, this is their RB two, this is their RB one, um, and like we're in like the like I was like in the fourteenth round, and I realized that like AB's like RB two slot was like not full. <laughs> I was like, I was so confused, and then I like realized because like, I, I thought I missed it, and then I realized that he only had one running back on his team. Well, isn't this Keyshawn Vaughn guy literally third string? So there's Ronald, Fournette Ronald Jones, Barber. Fournette, Ronald Jones, and I think there's like another guy. I want to say it's like Barber. Maybe they cut him. I don't know. There's so many backs I uh, just didn't want to yeah. touch it. Yeah, I, I retract what I said then. I thought he was higher up on the depth chart than that. Well, sir, no, I thought Fournette or the guy I got was going to be number one. Who but like no, who knows? You're right. You're right. But don't touch not. it. That's really. They the could point. all be unserviceable. Like no one could win. There's Here. just so many mouths. The guy. And then go ahead. You've sorry. got Gronk, Godwin, Brady, Evans, OJ Howard, Evans. Those people can't all get touches. Like you know, Mike Evans and Godwin are going to get theirs. But like, I mean, this isn't going to become like the 2000. Uh, you know. Was it 2019 or 2018 Chiefs? Like when Mahomes first came in, like he's not going to throw for 50 touchdowns. Like I, I just I feel like there's just too many weapons in Tampa Bay for me to feel great about any of them. Is kind of my issue. True. It was surprising like, to me that Tampa Bay players weren't reached for harder than they were. I thought they would be overdrafted, shocking. but most of the drafts I've been in, I feel like they've been overdrafted. But ours was like Chiefs, especially wide receivers, Mike Evans and uh. Who else is – because they have an amazing Godwin. wide receiver. Today. Godwin popped Godwin, off last yeah. year. And then did they have, do they still have Permian? Or per, Permian? Like they had a third string. Yeah. And then they also Alfred. have Gronk. <laughs> uh, OJ <laughs> Howard. OJ Howard, yeah. And Bray, like they're just like – at tight end, like they're stacked. Like OJ Howard and Bray should be starters for like a lot of teams. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Crazy. I mean like I guess we get to the rankings. Like, yep. By the, by the rankings, I've got to rank it pretty low, obviously. I have it, like, as one of the worst teams. And that really comes down to, like, him only having two running backs and the second one kind of being awful. But he actually has a lot of depth. He's a good team that should look at someone like – now I'm looking at it, like – Trade. Cooks. Yeah, Cooks is, like, a wide receiver, too. Uh, Christian Kirk is maybe a wide receiver, too. I think – I think Christian Kirk is going to be the big beneficiary from uh, from the Hopkins trade because True. when you, I think about Christian Kirk, I watched him in college because he's a an, a fine Texas Aggie, and so he he has a lot. He has like incredible speed and like really good ability to break the field. So I think he's a guy who will benefit a lot more from having Hopkins instead of Larry Fitzgerald. As like the guy, one. well, Larry Fitzgerald will still be in like the three wide receiver sets, which they run more than any other team in the league. But he but, won't be the number one guy relied upon. I mean, they're going to be key. Like Hopkins, the Texan, was permanently double teamed. So like Christian Kirk's going to get some great looks, and he is probably like I'm not going to say he's like a Tyree Kill level open field playmaker, but he's like top ten, if not like top five. He's incredible in space. So riddle me this. Spence, if Hopkins was very good as a Texan and a run-first offense being doubled, will his numbers go up or down being on a pass-first, aggressive, Cliff Kingsbury Cardinal offense? Down, because I think that the other options are going to be uh, slightly heightened. Uh, relative, like When he was on the Texans, like the only other option was Fuller, who's, who uh, hurt all the time. Like, always hurt. And their other wide receiver hey. options were kind of meh. Yeah, Texas Tech, we know. Don't forget Kiki. Kiki, I mean, he's like a... He's like a... Slot guy. He's like a Wes Walker, like, if Wes Walker was, like, drunk. And black. Yeah. Like, he's, he's like, I mean, he's, like, barely replacement level. But, yeah, like, the the point is, like, I think he'll be good, but I think his production will go down because I think they'll key in on him. And I think that'll... it's it. He'll be, like... Christian Kirk, it's not a perfect analogy, but kind of like Juju alongside Antonio Brown is kind of what I'm saying, where they'll key in on Hopkins, the playmaker, and then Kirk will get one-on-one matchups in space. Will Hopkins, so I, I, will Hopkins be a legitimate number one receiver this year, yes or no? Define that, like top 10? 
like, yeah, top 10, tier oh, one without guy. It, I mean, he'll be top 10 without a doubt. I just don't think he'll be top five. Ben, top 10, Hopkins? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Okay. Good answers. And we're scoring a beast, Tim. I'm giving it a 5.5. It's a little bit above average. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, uh, as his roommate, a 5. Yeah, I 4. 4.5. I got to I got to get a little wide scale. I, th- I thought it was pretty bad. I think he's in a great position where if Cooks or Kirk works out, I think he's got like five very good like wide receiver two type guys or yep. higher. Yep. His so wide receivers needs, are crazy. He needs to like get make a deal he's a trade. with he needs a Christian, trade someone. who I think is a little light on wide receiver and heavy on running back. Yep. Um though as someone speaking from experience, it's Trying very challenging to trade to C is impossible, but but you know maybe maybe Seagouch finds himself with four running backs that are starter quality, and then that'll be a big boon. Or maybe Weston, some of his long shots come in, and those are like those are the kind of people who I would look to do. And then he's looking pretty solid because I, I like Ertz, I like I like his wide receivers. I think Kyler Murray's like looking to be decent um, running quarterback, so that's good. Saints defense and and kicker are good. Like yep, a lot of potential here. I just if you have one running back, it's just hard for me to give you a high ranking until you like fix that because bye weeks will come, man. Agreed. You've got to have at least three. Yep. Like That's just like a starting point. Well, AB has one giant question mark for running back and one fraud at running back. Now he has like four good receivers, a very good tight end, a very good kicker, and two good quarterback options. To me, this team screams trade. Maybe even after two weeks, someone goes down 0-2, they can't get anything out of the receivers. You look to make a move. But being a sort of newbie owner, a newer guy, someone with less experience, I don't know how much I would actually count on him being able to make a trade in this league, a notoriously hard league to make trades in. And Austin's not exactly like a uh, a guy with a lot of persuasive ability, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't think he's going to be able to sweet talk anyone into like a trade that benefits them both. Yeah, de- it would definitely need to be someone coming to him uh, with the trade that makes sense. Which could only probably. be like two people, which is why it's like really difficult. Yeah, it's got to be like Christian or Weston, I think, from off the top of my head. Yeah, it basically has to be them. May- maybe Aaron, because Aaron has kind of four serviceable guys. But yeah, some so- someone, one of those three basically. And then we know... Even if it was someone else, no one else really trades. So yeah, theoretically, Aaron could try to dump Cook if you like. Aaron had a lot of trepidation about drafting Dalvin Cook, so part of me thinks that like if he was actually proactive and not just a dullard, he'd actually try to fucking trade Cook for a couple of these receivers. Well, I I, I was thinking like a like he just trades Singletary for like because his wide receivers are pretty awful. So if he goes and trades, like if Kirk like has a cu- like a game good game or two, and it's clear that okay he's going to be a like top tier wide receiver too, you just trade Singletary for Kirk, and then like that get that that solves the issue, right? Yeah, though I mean that would work too. We could literally sit here for an hour discussing possibilities that would never even get sent in a million years though. So let's move on to the next team. We got a nice steady flow going, and let's just keep it moving, fellas. Yep. Like Scotty Lavin. So Jackson, a guy who, oddly enough, has only had one winning season. Went 6-8 and eight once, went 7-7 seven and seven once, but then set the point record in the year where he only lost once. So this is a guy who very obviously pays attention, a guy with a lot of talent, and a guy who is aware of the fact he has a lot of talent. He reached for Lamar Jackson early. I honestly thought it would be Aaron who would, reach this much for Lamar and if I look at Jackson's team this season I actually think that even though his bench is very solid it's weaker than what I would consider a normal Jackson team to be what do you think Benny boy uh I I don't know I'm kind of mixed on this team uh it's not it doesn't look good to me honestly because I think Jackson's usually a pretty good drafter and a manager but I don't really like this draft for him. Uh, I love Lamar, but Jordan Howard and Chris uh, Carson. Uh, These are Chris two Carson guys. Won first round pick, I think. I can check Say that, that again. 
He said Chris Carson was his first round pick. Is that Which, what Spencer said? Yeah, that that just that's a, a little bit too much to me. I I feel like uh, Russell Wilson carries way too much of that offense for that team, even if they do run the ball a lot. He's right, um, by the way, eleventh overall. So that that's like why Adams fell to me. Like I think that's the spot where you should be taking Adams. Yeah, if you're eleven, you take Thomas Adams Jones. You don't take Chris Carson. I had Chris Carson last year. He's one of those guys that like gets the goal line looks and punches in and enough to be useful, but like you never really have much faith in. True, but I really do like, or actually, I don't like a lot of his team at all. To be fair, uh, other than that too, because Robert Woods and Calvin Ridley, even though I like them as players, I don't think they're great fantasy options. Um, even I, I think. <sighs> Even because Calvin Ridley's talented, and I think is he above the depth chart above Julio Jones? No, of course he... not. Jones no, is number no. one. He's like the best receiver and highest paid in the league. He's Jones like, is the number like... two for sure, and he, Jones gets the double coverage. Ridley yeah, is the number like two. Role Sorry, for, the for the, the Falcons have had so many great wide receivers so for so many like like the past fifteen years. I just forget all of them. Like Roddy White, like <laughs> I forget which one replaces the newer one, but. Uh, and I do like Noah Fant, but there's a lot of competition for tight end here in Denver, and I have a lot of extensive knowledge on Denver Sports Radio, so trust me, I, I don't have much faith in Noah Fant uh, breaking out that much. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just think this overall, this is a pretty uh, disappointing team for Jackson. He has Matt Ryan. He has Marlon Mack. Those are two guys that you can sort of nod your head and say, okay, that's solid bench depth, but... Man, I look at this team and say it's a really good thing that Jackson is such a uh, sharp owner, a guy who is always following the league very closely because I'm not a big fan of this team. This is definitely one of his weaker drafts. I'm going to have to give him a four, and I know that he's going to come on the show at some point and bust my balls, but to me this just is not a very good draft. You, this is what happens when you reach for a mid-tier back and reach for a quarterback. This is what it looks like. Yeah, uh, I mean, if let me put you this way, if he's playing Matt Ryan, he's done. Like, yeah, he's got like Lamar has to like, for, like I'm looking at this team thinking, okay, what has to happen? He's got to like play the waiver wire like amazing, um, w- and which is likely that, though. Oh, he like he's not out of it for sure. He's very much in contention for like our division because like I we we both know he'll he'll make moves. I just like. Like, does Jordan, like, what's Jordan Howard going to do? I'm pretty sure he's, like, a timeshare guy. Like, he's he's not a passing back. Like, what I, – I just have – like, what is his path there? Like, I, I think he might not even be a serviceable flex, potentially. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, maybe if Lamar gets, like, 30 points a game and then, like, he makes a good pickup, he can make it to the playoffs. But, like, I just – the path there is so hard compared to a team that, like – some of the other teams where, like, uh, I mean, like, I just think of, like, your division, Wiley. Like, those are really complete teams. Like, yep. I think of those compared to this. Uh, yeah, it's just tough for me to see a path. And I really hate his backs. Like, I guess his best back is Chris Carson. I mean, I don't think he's bad, but I think he's, like, a RB2. Like, mid, yeah. mid-RB2. Yeah, no, definitely. He's one of those guys that, like his fucking ceiling is like 80 yards and you hope to God he gets a touchdown. And he's the red zone guy, but like you're sitting there thinking like it's touchdown or bust with this guy. He's either going to get 6 or 14. He's not a guy that you want to really latch on to. He's definitely an RB2 guy. I would agree with that assessment. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that this is the just like his team logo, uh, this roster is just gross and I'm going to have to give this draft a 3. Uh, Jackson, I love you, you're my boy, but I don't like this team at all. I think it's been the worst team that we've reviewed so far, and that's after we just reviewed Austin. So, uh, I don't know. I, I Your managing skills are legendary, but I, I don't uh, – and, and you will have a fighting chance, but I don't like what it looks like right now, at least from the get-go. Well, none of us 
thinks that this is personal, or obviously it's not a shot at Jackson the person. So some this is no, a no, of his team. Personal. Oh, I mean, shit, I've seen comments for 10 years. What do you mean I'm only three? Are you an idiot? I'm number... Everyone always thinks they're number one, like, no matter who Dick they are. Every, yeah. Oh, I'm number one. What are you, an idiot? Two? Two? <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, two. It's like, I should have been one. That's Christian. Every year I do one of these videos. Every year. But... Jackson will be a threat because of his intelligence and ability and sports knowledge, but this is a below average draft for me. I'm going to give it a four. Yeah, it's it's the worst draft I've ever seen from Jackson in a couple of years in the league. And I'm normally like, I'm very rarely like over the moon on his guys. Like, oh, it's an amazing draft, but it's all, always a solid drafter. And like a lot of the guys that I'm not high on that are like kind of sleeper, he, he seems to hit on pretty consistently. So, like, I get him respect for that. Um, but, yeah, it, this is like a three and a half, four. It's the worst team. And I, I have him noteworthy. I have him as the number one bench depth. It's just because I'm really high on Matt Ryan. So, his, I would say his bench depth is bottom third, fourth quarter. Like, wow. Of the, it's bad bench, too. It's so, just inflated because I, I liked Matt Ryan a lot. I, I'm gonna, we're going to play a little quick segment we play on the show sometimes where I say a phrase, and then you guys give me the percent chance that it happens. It's a very simple game. Percent chance that Jackson makes the playoffs. Benny. 15%. Spencer. 25. There it is. Moving on to Cameron's draft. Cameron, the lowest winning percentage in the regular season by a country mile, even well below his sister who was younger than him, and he drafted Dak, who I think Spencer explicitly predicted was going to happen. He got Melvin Gordon again, a guy who we had last year, Alvin Kamara, a guy who I think a lot of people either don't really trust or absolutely love, DJ Moore, who I'm not high on, uh, AJ Brown, whatever. To me, this is just a very forgettable team, but Benny, I would love your thoughts on one of the fellow three twins here, man. I think it was a pretty good draft by Cameron, honestly. Uh, Dak, he got at a pretty good point in the draft because Dak fell really far. Um, or not really far, but he fell a little bit. And uh, I really, so I, I love that. I love his running backs because I, I like Melvin Gordon, and I think Melvin Gordon is going to be the better one even more than Philip Lindsay, even though I have Philip Lindsay. But I think Melvin Gordon's actually going to have a pretty good year uh, with Drew Locke and all those weapons that they have uh, in Denver now. And Alvin Kamara, like you said, I mean, could be loved and can be hated amongst fantasy owners. And I am amongst the ones that love him. I think he's a great running back, especially in a, a system uh, with Drew Brees that utilizes weapons like him so much to, like, the delight of fantasy owners for years now. Except um, Taysom Hill. His wide receivers, think. yeah. <laughs> his wide receivers uh, are, are, are pretty, uh, I would say, below average to me. Uh, I don't trust Carolina's passing game right now. Same. And I don't, and I don't trust uh, a wide receiver from Carolina, uh, especially as my number one or number two. Uh, A.J. Brown... I, I do like A.J. Brown as a, as a player, but I don't think fantasy-wise he's going to have a good year because I feel like they're even with Tannehill, they're going to just pound the ball with Henry again. Yep. Um, Run first. Like they did yeah. last year. Yeah. Cause they're they're going to – I don't know why they paid Tannehill to hand off the ball so much, but <laughs> they they decided to do that. Um, and, I, and I do like Marvin Jones. I think he's a really good fit there. And Detroit and a, him and when Stafford's healthy and when he's healthy – uh, they're a good combination together, so I do like that flex position. But ironically enough, having Ryan Tannehill, uh, Coleman, uh, Debo Samuel, which I love Debo Samuel. I think that's a great uh, draft pick, by the way. Sam. But uh, Sterling Shepard and Mike Williams, that's not doing it for me. And, just, and yeah, to me, just other than a few spots, a pretty lackluster. Uh, well, I think it's a good draft, but I feel like it's lackluster. I feel like he actually, when it comes to, when I say lackluster, I mean he wasn't just going for big names. He actually uh, got some pretty good uh, picks in there that uh, that were 
logistical and smart and not just because of the name themselves. And uh, so it's not – that's why I say that because it's a good team, and I think that Cameron had a, one of his best drafts in a long time. What would you rate it then, King of Funny? Uh, I'd probably give it a – I'll give it a seven and a half. Oh, wow, that's pretty damn high. All right, Spencer, take it away, homie. Because you, this is ranked ninth in your rankings. Yeah, I mean, not too much to say. Uh, he didn't like really make any egregious picks, but like, I also feel like he didn't like. He kind of like took people a little late every pick, right? Then they probably should have gone. He definitely reached on Gordon, who like, I think he was like a round and a half early. So that was like the biggest thing that I can remember. I think he reached about half a round on Dak, maybe a full round. It, it's just like kind of what Ben said. It's just forgettable. Like below average team. We know it's not going. He's probably not going to. Man- I mean, he's probably never going to watch this. A and B. He's never. He's not going to manage out of this. Like this team's not making the playoffs. I think he wins four games. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to downgrade that to a six and a half. I still think he has a chance of doing good, but I I don't think that. Uh, especially with how his managing can be at, at some points. Uh, there's there's not much really going for him uh, when it comes to his wide receivers. So I think that's going to be a, a huge detriment. So I, was st- I still think it was a good draft for Cameron, and maybe that's why I said seven and a half originally, because I think he did a good job. Uh, but I, I'm going to, yeah, give it a six and a half. That's fine. I'm, gonna I'm, hit- I'm, at, I'm at a five. All right. That's worth Cool. Well, I'm going to hit the punches here. I think that Gordon is a guy that Cameron saw last year. He drafted him. He did well. Cameron probably still thinks he's on the fucking Chargers, and he thinks he's solo starting. He's going to be great. Uh, not a guy I love, Gordon. Chimera, same deal. It's like, yeah, big name. He was, like, really big a couple of years ago. It's probably like Cameron took him, but overall not a big Chimera guy. I don't think DJ Moore is that good. Brown is on a run-first offense. Prescott, we've spoken at length about how I think he's inaccurate. I've even spoken on other fucking YouTube channels and shows about how I think Prescott, Prescott's inaccurate and it isn't Dallas's answer. So one thing I will say about this team is he has Tannehill on the bench, which I like. Everyone had Tannehill dead and buried last year, and I still thought that he had some ability, so I like Tannehill. I'm glad the Titans did well man. last year. <laughs> yeah, um, me way less so than Spencer, but I always liked Tannehill even even before he was uh, hurt his knee. I also like Sterling Shepard and Coleman and Samuel. So weirdly, I like uh, his bench more than I like his starters. But knowing Cam, you can might you might as well just like write his current lineup in granite until the bye weeks come, because Cam, like out of anyone in the league, takes the least note of poor performances and writing hot hands and free agent waiver wire if Cameron would just like put in waiver requests for like the blatantly obvious guys like for instance like a top tier bat goes down let's just say like Zeke blows his knee out like no one has Tony Pollard in this example it's always number one prior yeah like yeah exactly that's the point I'm making it's like Cameron's always first waiver priority Cameron could literally make like brain dead super easy mindless season defining pickups of obvious guys and always get them because he's top priority and it never happens like I don't know how many times that like there has been someone so obvious out because someone got hurt or something else significant happened and Cameron always misses on the most obvious guys the guys that like as a winning player you put claims in thinking that there's zero chance you'll ever get them and you never do but Cameron is fucking priority one letting those guys slip so to me, that's why I'm giving him a three and a half. Is this team, to me, it's not good. It has depth, but he doesn't understand when to put the depth pieces in. He doesn't know when to shuffle. He doesn't know when to trade. Cameron, I think, is, and I'm not trying to be mean, but he's by far the worst manager. And He'll never watch it. Who cares? Yeah. True. That's, uh, that's unfortunately Let's, true. I know where they think Tevin Coleman has sickle cell. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Which... <laughs> Which I, the reason why it's noteworthy is because of COVID, right? We haven't really discussed COVID, and I know we we might maybe should have even done this season because of COVID. Oh, oh but, is, but but this is this is uh, this is one thing that is relevant. That I I think that is a condition that it's higher risk for COVID. 
So if someone on the team gets COVID, he might sit out the season. He was already thinking about that before the season started. So just a, another reason to not like his team, I guess. It's a very just thought I'd bring point. it up. Well, you know, Ben is a big fan of sickle cell as far as bringing it up goes, not like the disease itself. but As far as fun facts go, some black people that have sickle cell, excuse me, all people that have sickle cell, uh, which is all black people, can, cannot come play in Denver that sometimes. Not <laughs> uh, yeah, I love how you, you slipped that one in like it was a corrector, which is all of them, by the way. Oh, is it? S- sickle okay. cell is, only, is it only a, a thing that African Americans have or African it is, but not all of them have it, as you said. Well, God, oh, okay. Well, God, sorry, I misspoke. I'm sorry. This, I didn't mean to say that. This is like one of, this is like a heat check moment in this video, where if you've made it to this point, like an hour and a half in, God bless you. And if you heard that, I'm, you're like chuckling to yourself. No one who's made it to this canceled. point in this video is like kvetching about that. All right, so let's. I bet, I bet Weston is this far. Weston, text me if you made it this far. <laughs> yeah, Weston's over here, like God. Can't or believe Billy they put me the winner. Uh, Billy, Billy, come over here. Look what they said about our team. Oh, Billy, they said you were a fraud. Billy, turn away. No. All right, let's let's talk about no fraud before this turns into the freaking Titanic. He's got <laughs> Mahomes. He's got Fournette. He's got Eckler, Thielen, Cup, Cook, Metcalf. This is a team with a lot of big names. He's got Raplesberger coming off the injury on the bench as well as James White, and I think this is a pretty damn solid team. Obviously, there are some question marks. I think Eckler, Fournette, whether you want to put it in terms of injury question marks or new quarterback sort of team-centric question marks, but uh, I like this team overall. I think it's certainly above average. Yeah, he, he kind of – I think that Fournette's a trap, honestly. Like, I don't I, – he, he might not be completely, like, worthless, but insane injury risk. There's so many options, so many weapons. He could be the starter and only get 120 points. Like, that's well within the realm of possibilities. You true. know what I mean? Very true. And I think he drafted him a little early. Obviously, Mahomes is great. Has been injury prone, like last year. So, hopefully, if he's healthy, that'll, that'll be good. Um, Whoa, I like his one weapons. In. I like Adam. I like Adam's a like Cup. Or, sorry, I like Adam Thielen. I like Cup. I like Cook. He's got a lot of – I like his wide receivers. Um, I think his running backs are kind of meh. Yeah. I, like, he kind of has – he, he kind of has has both halves of, like, a shitty timeshare. Oh, what's So, I cats? guess it's like – it's, like, almost like he's banking that one half goes down because if one half goes down, then the other half is good. But, like, on a week-to-week basis, like – Well, what are you going to do? Start knows? both of them? You know, it's like – And also super noteworthy and why I was really off of the – the backs I, I actually think james white is the back you want and it's because i think about who cam was playing with i'm not saying james white is christian mccaffrey but like that's the kind of back similar you, yeah he doesn't want like he basically is sunny michelle so like why would they like why would they run them both right it's like who was the back that they had uh you would know wiley panthers fan it's just a runner uh, guy Gansler williams yes he's so Michelle is like very similar to D'Angelo Williams stylistically, and so, uh, and they like stopped really using him, you know, with Cam, or they didn't use him as much as they like he would have on another team, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm a little higher on James White of the two, but like I, I think you don't want to touch either because Cam's going to steal goal line touches, you know, in theory. I guess yep. Cam might not even be the guy, but well, I think they, you, they said you Cam was the him starter. As the guy. They said, yeah. already said Cam was, a, it's not going to be that fucking no-name guy. And furthermore, like, everyone knows that the Patriots running backs are notoriously, like, a trap. Like, notorious timeshare, one of those offenses similar to the Saints that spreads the ball around a lot. The thing about the Saints offense is you can pencil Michael Thomas in for 80 receptions a year. It's not really a guy on the Pats like that, you yep. know, since Wes Welker left. But anyway, I think that being said... To me, this is an above-average team, despite the lack of running back depth, and I'd give it a solid six. Yeah, I would have to give it a six as well. Uh, I, I don't want to. I think oh. it's a. Oh, sorry. I was saying I, I would give it a six as well because I think it's a a solid team. But I, I, I like y'all said, I don't like the uh, running back situation, and I don't think he has much depth. So, probably a six. I don't want to like be consensus here, but. 
I think it's a six. It's if, average. Yeah. His ranking's eighth, but really close to average. His depth isn't the best. It's depth is average. It's just an average team, an average draft. He reached in some spots. He made some good good picks in others, but I think he reached more than he made good picks. So. The, the team, I think, does have enough punching power to be a slightly above average, which is why I gave it a six instead of a five. All right. Yep. So to conclude, we have Ben and Aaron. Let's start with dear Benny boy. You can fucking take it away, Spencer. Run down the whole roster and I'll follow. And then we can do post-mortem like we did with the, the first two POVs. Roast me. So he has a lot of the guys that I kind of had labeled as trappy. I think we talked about some of these widely. I think Joe Mixon is trappy. I think Nick Chubb. I just... Something about it, like he's talented, he could easily score 200 points, but I, I just didn't really feel great about him. Then the fa- I guess part of it's the fact that uh, what's his face is just sitting there in the wings. Um, uh, who's the the, the w- woman beater guy for the Chiefs? Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. I was about to say, uh, yeah. Anyway, I was about to say Jamal Charles, but yeah, no, it, Kareem Hunt. Mike Evans is decent. I think Odell Beckham, super injury prone, super inconsistent. I kind of don't like him. Hunter Henry's decent, decent option. Um, you know, uh, Philip Lindsay is a good good insurance policy. If Gordon goes down, Philip Lindsay is it, you know vaults into RB one territory. He's been super effective. Like it's been crazy to me why they were not willing to commit to him because he's. He's insane in space. He's yeah. super electric. Lots of yards per carry. Yeah. He's kind of like that. Uh, he reminds me of like Darren Sproles a little bit, but like a little bigger when he runs. Yeah, more bruising than Sproles. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not that high on Joe Burrow. It doesn't really make sense to me why people are so high on him. His offensive line is bad. His weapons are kind of injury prone. So, meh. Duke Johnson could be okay if, as like a handcuff to David Johnson potentially. Detroit back, wide receiver for Denver. McLaurin's yes. okay. I think he's better than okay. I would slight, rate. Slight. I'd rate McLaurin as good. He's like their only option to fucking no, no. score. He's talented, but like, who's throwing in the ball? Some shitter. Exactly. Haskins. Yeah, I just. The, the, the offense is just so inept, I, I just can't... I think the Washington might be one of the worst offenses ever, like this year. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're bad. Like, they're intentionally trying to lose, basically. And then Slayton's like a third wide receiver on, like, an okay Giants team, I think. Or is he... It's like Shepard. Shepard, yeah. Tate. Tate. Yeah, so, he's, I mean, how high can I really get on him? I like the defensive kicker. Another yeah. like not to be mean, but it's like another average team. Like, not not nothing too crazy here. It's not like awful, but like nothing that get you know gets me gets me up in arms. Like, oh, that's an amazing team. To me, I, I guess so I guess if the it? wide receiver, like a five and a half, it's a, it's it's average. I think I have them ranked tenth, which is maybe a little low. Looking at it, I think some of that's because I have Lindsey in as the backup, so maybe. If, if, if Melvin Gordon goes down and like that bumps Lindsay quite a bit, it looks like a lot better. To me, this is a team that reads on paper a lot better than it plays. You have Mixon, who of course is a starting back who doesn't really share time, but ultimately has very little line and not that much talent. You have Nick Chubb, who had a great year last year and was very highly heralded and got a lot of attention, but ultimately I don't know how much of that is replicable. And I don't know how much they're actually going to run on that team with him. I feel like that's a pass-heavy offense. Although I, that is a solid pick, admittedly, you know. Uh, Mike Evans, this is a guy who gets 1,000 yards every season. He said Winston aired out to him in garbage time every year for his whole career. No longer. And Fitz, who was literally doing the exact same thing. You know, Mike Evans, I think this might be the first year in his career where he doesn't break 1,000 yards. In pre- previous drafts, Mike Evans is a guy you consider taking 13th, 14th, 15th. Maybe you don't want to reach for like a obviously tier two running back like an Aaron Jones or a Mixon. You could take a guy like Evans. This season, I feel like Evans has fallen way off. Godwin was exceptional last year. You have O.J. Howard. 
you have Gronk, you have Fournette. As we've touched on a lot this video, Tampa Bay has a lot of options. Now, admittedly, this will make them a better football team, but it makes them a worse fantasy team. And I think that Mike Evans you is probably going to You kind of want a funnel when it comes to fantasy. Like, yeah. you don't want to like, you want there to oh, be it could go guy. any of these directions. You want yeah. it like these two or three. Yeah, it's like the opposite of real two. life. In real life, yeah. you want as many lethal options as possible. In fantasy, like you want it to be like, yeah, if they score, it'll be this one dude. And Evans, yeah, in the past, it was like that. We saw it significantly less with Godwin emerging last year, and I think this year, it's he's not going to be bad, but like he's not going to. I don't even think he'll be top ten, honestly. And then OBJ, big mouth, big name, made by New York, heard every year, cry baby. Uh, too many question marks, too little talent. This is a guy who has twice of T.O.'s ego and a quarter of his talent. Not a fan of him at all. Henry's very good when he's healthy. Lindsay's explosive if he plays, like the Chiefs D. Sort of a slapdick division as far as offense goes. Uh, Judy's my new favorite player. I like Scary Terry. It's like a six to me. It's above average, but I think uh, Allen was the guy I was actually going to draft. Running quarterback, high upside, but I think your receivers on paper, oh yeah, they're god tier. You know, you look like you got Flash and Jadong lined up there, but in reality, like it's really not that great. Like you got two people. I mean, they're, they're average. I I just like. Yeah, it looks great, but it's really just like good. Yeah, but that that was like the highlight of your team. So then your team goes from like you're looking great to just good, to like six, which is where I'm at. All right, Benny Boy, take it away. Let's hear it. Uh, I honestly have to agree with what most of y'all uh, had to say because after looking at the draft, I I thought it was probably like a six at best. Uh, I I, dra- I drafted way more for consistency. Um, and I didn't draft a quarterback until I think I didn't draft Josh Allen to the seventh round, or I think that's what it was, but seventh or eighth. But I, as which is probably the latest I've ever waited. But I, I'm really high on Josh Allen. I like his running ability. I think he's got a lot of talent with that, and a white quarterback that can run. I mean, I'll root for him every day. So mm-hmm. Joe Mixon. Uh, wait, I agree with what y'all say about Joe Mixon, but I th- I think he. Uh, He's going to be used a little bit more, or not more, but he's going to be used uh, with uh, Joe Burrows to kind of take that pressure off of him, off of Joe Burrow. Uh, so I, I, I think Joe Mixon's going to have a good year, but he is injury prone. That is true. Nick Chubb, I do. I mean, I, I like Chubb. Love the name. Love the guy. I think he's a good player. But they have Kareem Hunt as well, so that kind of concerns me. I don't know how how much is that is going to cut into his. Uh, production. Uh, so, so hold on, Ben. Quick question on uh, Mixon. So he had 300 carries last year. Like, do you think he gets more than that? Like, 300 is a lot of carries, man. And yeah. today's enough. No, I don't think he does. But I, 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 I obviously think he gets less. But I still think that he p- produces because I think he, that he does have talent. And I think that, uh, I mean, you're, well, you're not wrong. Talented. The offensive I line is that. terrible. But I, they try to shore it up with a few veteran signings, so we'll see. But I, I mean, I, I still think that they're going to use him quite a bit. I don't think they're going to ask Joe Burrow to pass it 50 times a game. That's fair. I mean, I, I think he'll get production. I just, I had concerns about his ADP relative to like injury risk and. And that production. is true. Which yes, I mean, I he's your first round he pick, and risk. like those are supposed to be can't miss, like. I'm building a solid floor, and like, I don't know. That was my big issue with with Mixon personally. And that's sometimes I I, I have to weigh that, or we all have to weigh that. But uh, those two choices. But for me, I'd rather have someone that gets consistent carries and is like the only option, which is rare in the NFL as we know nowadays, as an actual number one guy and not being in a timeshare. So, and and. He probably has some wear on himself after these past few seasons because, like you said, 300 carries. But I think he'll be too. fine. To yeah. me, Joe, oh. Mix- Joe Mixon is the poster child of the tier two back. The guy that if you're picking 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, if you're in one of these spots, 
you don't want to take him, but you know that once you get to round three, well, it's yeah. like once you get to round three, 15 picks later, there's not going to be shit for running backs. So Joe Mixon to me is the face of one of these guys that you like begrudgingly take. And it's like, I hope he gets 12 every week. And to be fair, like you could have the number one running back, like one, two punch. Like I could see that. Like that's crazy. It's just, there, yeah, there's, a, there, lot there's a lot of risk as well. So exactly. it's, yeah. And I, I, I like my wide receivers though. And Wiley is, was a hundred percent right with what he said as, uh, as far as it goes when it comes to how uh, I feel like the ceiling for both these players are, is high, but I feel like once again, like they, they will not perform like they have for different reasons. Cause I think Mike Evans is talented, but I feel like there's so many options there and I feel, I don't feel like Brady's going to have like some rec- like record year. So I, I think it hurts him as well. Cause Jameis literally led the league and, uh, and talk shit all you want about the 30-30 interception touchdown thing, but led the league in uh, touchdowns and passing yards. Yep. So there was a reason why Mike Evans uh, has been so good because he gets they pass the ball so much there, and especially he's a in great the fourth talent. quarter. Exactly. So I I really like Mike Evans, even though uh, it's not Jameis anymore. But Odell, uh, I think he'll have a, ba- a bounce back year. I think he'll actually might have actually gelled with Baker and and they still have a uh, a few other good I forget his name is it Jarvis Landry yeah, the Jarvis other wide Landry receiver they have who's friends with them though ha- Cooper which which both of them uh are great wide receivers when it comes to talent but when it comes to fantasy production kind of iffy so I hopefully that's what I was I drafted him to bounce back uh I do love Hunter Henry though Great tight end. I think he's one of the better uh, tiered tight ends. Uh, probably, I don't know. I, I think he's probably tier two. But Philip Lindsay, uh, I, I mean, I had him last year. I like him. I like his whole story. They love him here in Denver, even though they know that they won't pay him, and it's pretty ludicrous for how productive that he's been. He was an undrafted player. And he literally went to the like University of Colorado. Yeah. Or he, five yards a touch or something. It's crazy. He's he, super efficient. He was great the year Spencer had him. Yeah, I mean, and so I like him. Uh, but Melvin Gordon is going to cut into that a lot. And I think Melvin Gordon personally is going to have a good year. Because uh, I think the offense for the Broncos is going to be good. If the offensive line could hold up. But I think that he could uh, benefit from that. So what would you give sure. this, your team overall, you think, Ben? Probably a, yeah, a six. So just one more thing before we move on to the final team. Aaron, a notoriously good drafter. There have been assertions for most people in the league that you've checked out or you've quit trying since your glory years back in 2012 when you were considered the most formidable owner in the league, if not one of them. And you also held uh, 25% of the team ownership. <laughs> would you like to would you like to comment would you like to comment on this assertion that you've checked out or you've fallen off as an owner or you don't care anymore yeah it kind of pisses me off honestly because this league has like been one of the most important things in my life and I know that sounds pathetic if like you don't know about like how much we care about this league but I I love this league and I like I've always taken like pride in like managing it so like I don't know what Aaron is talking about when he says that I've checked out or that I, you know, I just have no act. I mean, I don't know what that he's what he's referring to because I I feel like I'm pretty active. All right, that's a solid statement and a solid rebuttal, I would say. And I would also point out that any time that said on this show, I'm a stalwart in saying no. You know, Ben, his head's still in it. He's still a solid owner. But anyway, we can move on to Aaron now, the aforementioned Aaron Ramhard, who, of course, was exceptional in the regular season of last year and was just cut to ribbons by Seagouch in the playoffs in the semifinals. One of the most exciting playoff games we've seen in this league in a long time. And Aaron, of course, is a guy who drafts very well but is sort of known to make foolish decisions down the stretch that sort of hurt himself. And if we look at his team overall, 
Jared Goff is a guy who has a lot of options, is a guy who gets a lot of credit from the national media as being improved, as being a good quarterback. He has Dalvin Cook, just like last year, who I believe was ranked number two in running back points last year. Very solid. When he's healthy, he's exceptional. Plays on a run-first offense. He's got Aaron Jones, who I believe is one of the most consistently overrated players in the league. I think that Green Bay running backs just you should really stay away from. And He's a boomer bust guy, even though he was pretty sharp last year. And if we look at the rest of his team, not to uh, paint with broad strokes here, but I think it's forgettable. Very forgettable, frankly. Do you want to take over here, Spencer, and just really smash the high notes with unyielding honesty here? Yeah, super interesting team. Uh, he was a big beneficiary from, the, I think, the quarterback uh, surge, I guess. I mean, in a lot of the drafts I've been seeing, uh, like Cook, Cook and Aaron Jones have both been like first round picks. Uh, so pretty pretty cool that he got both of those guys. Um, and Connor, I think, will be serviceable like as a flex guy. So really, really I, I actually take back I said Ben has the best one two punch. This I think that this is a better one two punch. Um, I agree. Well, Being what less, who which two specifically? Jones Cook. Okay, that's what I thought. Aaron, I think, Aaron went quad running back, by the way, rounds one through four. Yeah, because I, I think I think that like it's very close, but I think that these guys are a little safer than than Ben's tandem uh, of guys. But I think that these their ceiling is also a little higher. Like I mean, Jones scored like 270 points last year, and Cook was hurt like a couple weeks, I think, and he still got to like. Almost 250. Like, he, that's insane. He was money every time he played. He's really solid. He's really talented. A little injury risk, though. Like, I think both those guys have gotten hurt in the past. And I think that 16 touchdowns for Aaron Jones is really unreasonable. I Agreed. actually felt like... I felt like uh, uh, Adams actually kind of... I think that Jones actually hawked a lot of Adams's touchdowns. I think Adams only had like five or six last year. So I think that, I think that realistically 10 is probably more, more like likely for Jones. And then I think Adams bumps back up to 10 too, you know, right. I can tell you about that personally, because I had Aaron Rodgers as, as y'all clowned me about so much, obviously. So I knew I, I, I watched those games on red zone all the time and they'd be in the red zone every time and they give it to Jones <laughs> so many times Jones just stole a touchdown and like it, it just pissed me off to no end Ben was over yeah. there like oh I should have had Mahomes that bastard I, 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 just, I, I just feel so like some of, it's, some of it's just like run bad that you know once w w once kind of they uh they fit like once kind of they balance it out, like he'll fall off some, but he'll still be solid. Like he'll still be probably a thousand yard rusher, you know, 160, 170 points, which is like great for an RB2. Um, yeah, solid one, two, three punch. I don't want to get too hung up on that. I really like Parker. Even if we know the Dolphins are going to be bad, but we also know that they have Fitz or that rookie and they're going to spling it around a bunch and play from behind. It's kind of like the Bucks 2.0, and he's kind of like their Godwin. You know, so he's going to get a lot of looks. Kind of the same thing with this Jaseki guy. I, I, I'm not sold on Jaseki, though. He really only had a couple good games last year, and I, I I don't know if he's ready to make the leap, but tight end's pretty thin. Uh, and I, I think Blake Jarwin is like... <laughs> I, it's a I homer pick. Anything. Yeah, I mean, that was the biggest miss. Like, I had, nothing is wrong with the way Aaron drafted. I liked his golf pick. I'm high on golf, I think. I think that they're they're gonna have to sling it a lot. Like they're gonna play in some high scoring games and they've got weapons. You can put up points in a hurry, but like I just look at his bench and like Pollard, Homer pick and he reached. The C D Lamb guy, I know Ben was high on him. I like I just like he's like what, like a RB R B two at best. Wide receiver uh, just, three. No, I know what he is, but I'm just trying to think like what is his upside? Like obviously Gallup and Cooper are better. And then you know, Zeke's going to get, I mean, I just question, like, even with his talent, like, what is he really? And then Jarwin, like, 
it's not shouldn't even be rostered honestly like maybe maybe that's too too low on him but i'm just i'm not feeling a lot of his bench guys i like singletary and i think that's like sutton i think sutton could be okay um i just think of him as like a wide top end wide receiver three think of parker as like a low end wide receiver two. Oh, so agreed this is perfect this is like a perfect team for a trade. Yep. If if he if he hits on Cook, Jones, and Cooper and, and Connor, he could totally move Singletary for like Cooks or like uh, or if if Kirk is as good as I think he might be, Kirk could be a good guy to plug in. And then what's cool is then he could he'll have three backs and three wide receivers and he can play bye weeks a little more versus like now. When like Sutton's on bye week, like is he going to put in Sanders? I guess Sanders could be okay. I think he would put in Lamb. <laughs> I mean, I I'm just know. being it, honest. I mean, Sa- yeah, Sanders, I agree. Sanders is decent. To, to me, like, this team just screams at me weak at wide receiver. Like, Parker and Sutton ain't shit. I'm sorry, but, like, if those are your one and two guys, like, you shit the bed somewhere. Think about last year, though. Like, he had very similar, like, guys. I feel like last year he had like Lockett and then Lockett is the number one receiver of a good offense. I don't see how that's similar at all. Like a proven number one guy with not a lot of competition, a good offense with a good quarterback on a winning team. He wasn't the number one guy last year though. He was not below DK Metcalf. He was the number one guy. Metcalf was faster, but Lockett was the number one guy. I mean, I don't know about production, I think, like, Metcalf had more points at the end of the year, or, like, almost the same. But whatever, like, we're, 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 we're being ticky-tack. I, I, I just, I mean, Parker, both of the, like, what's cool is both of those guys are wide receiver ones and bad offenses that are going to funnel looks their way because they don't have a lot of options, which is, like, good. But I think it'd be, I think he could definitely do to upgrade one of those two guys, that, which I, I, I agree with your point, so. Yeah. You, I mean, your point about them playing from behind is very good. And it's fits. It's not like some sl- slap dick in Miami. So that Parker will probably I no get his problem. slushes. I have no problem. Who wins to- the division? Mm. Jesus. It's got to be Aaron, right? I would say Aaron would probably be the front runner. Let's see. I, I like No Fright's team. It's like okay, I guess. I just don't Dude. know. Like, Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones are coming off of tremendous years. I get it, but I don't have, like, faith in either of them because well, they don't have, like, a big track record. To, to me, like, Cameron's basically drawing dead because of his history of ownership <laughs> and his team isn't that amazing to begin with. Lol. Um. So it's like it's basically like I think Aaron is clearly the front runner of the remaining three, um, and then Ben, you and Mark are pretty close. Like you need your obviously you need your two early picks to like end up breaking towards their ceiling more than their floor. And exactly. If that happens, like you you could be better than Aaron, especially if Aaron has like like for instance, if if Cook goes down with injury, his team looks. It's still like serviceable because he can plug in Singletary by weeks, and then maybe Sutton goes down with injury or something. All of a sudden, his team looks very vulnerable. So like, he's got some depth, but I think if he hadn't been such a cowboy homer, he'd have better depth. And I, I mean, it, all three of y'all are in play. I would give Aaron the slight edge. Yeah, agreed. I think like Aaron is maybe at like a six and a half, you know, and you and Mark are. Between like five and a half and six, there's really <clears throat> excuse me. There's really no uh, like clear like front runner or team that just like wows you in this division. To yeah. be fair, and I think that's historically accurate for the division. I think that's the weak weakest division by far. Y'all's division, the uh, big oven. The big oven for yeah, it's renamed the big oven for a reason. Thank goodness. Because etc. was hella corny. I'm glad. I'm glad that you initiated that. By the way, there was like no. It pissed thing. me off. Et I wanted some pride. Well, I mean, it's like everyone knew you guys were the weakest, so it was like, oh yeah, it's like that other division. They're not a threat. Pissed me off. Well, we've had some. We've had some good teams in the past from from our division. 
because I know he'll never watch to this point in the video. Like, it really isn't that the division is that bad. Like, it's just Cameron's awful. So it's like basically one person's drawing dead every year. So that like lowers the overall division win rate. Like, I mean, True. Ben, Ben, no fried and Aaron are all, like all y'all are around five hundred. Like, we put in another five hundred owner, and like that's not even like that bad of a division. You know? <clears throat> Like I started off like last year like I, so bad like I think I was like two and seven and then I I ended up like six and eight yeah you, you or something like that like yeah so I mean like I like it's not, like that's why like Aaron's comment about no effort which is like just makes me so confused because I always put in effort even if I'm never like winning a season like I always put in at my players and I always look at the wire and I always look to initiate trades if if they I, if available so. I don't know. That's a great point. I think to wrap up the video, I want to do two very quick things. Obviously, we've sort of picked the winners as we've gone along. But I'd like for you guys to rank the three divisions this year in terms of difficulty. Not like, oh, the owner. It's just what I think of the owner ability like over like the decade. But this year specifically, team strength. Which division is hardest? Which one's middle? Which one's easiest? And you can take a second to think. All right. Well, I think Curselands obviously is number one. Uh, Being most so, I mean, difficult. The the fact that you mentioned earlier that Lily is uh, like just underrated and because uh, I mean we 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 don't like look at her like oh yeah she's gonna make a really good draft decisions and moves but I mean she she's made some pretty good drafts in the past and some some good uh, managing at times so. Uh, so when that's your weakest link, that's saying something. <laughs> like that's it's one hell of a division. Number two, I, for this season, I would say uh, the big oven, obviously, or not obviously, honestly. Uh, I think there's a a lot of uh, consistency on a lot of the teams. Even Cameron's, I liked I liked some of his picks. So I think it's going to be a I mean a, a toss up this year in our division. But I still think that it's going to produce a lot of good uh, records. Um, or at least more more than usual. And then I think last is obviously Division of Death. Uh, Austin's draft mixed with Jackson's draft, that combined, uh, no matter how good uh, management could be, I think that is going to tank that division a little bit. Good answer. Excellent, in fact. Spence? Can you repeat the question for me? Sorry. Yeah, I'm just basically asking you to rank the strength of the divisions this year, and it's team strength, not like strength of owners throughout the history of the league. Team strength specific to this year, ranking the divisions in terms of strength. I actually, uh, like, I think Curse Lands is the strongest. Like, my rankings play it out, but even without those, I would still say the same thing. I think that the Oven is probably the second strongest. I think that Every team is pretty, it's like none of them are really amazing. Aaron's is decently strong, but everyone's de like decent. No one really did horrible. And then probably the weakest as of right now is mine. I think Jackson had a pretty poor draft in my opinion. I think that AB a has got some big holes in his roster. And I think even Clot 4, um, he's got an average team, but, you know, nothing insane. So... So it's got to be, like I said, one, two, three. All right, so we're in agreement because that's what I think too. All righty, so that will be the video. It was very long-winded as every draft review is because we have to go through every single fucking player. But that's just the nature of the video. Guys, it was great to have you on. We're going to do TWIF every week this year. No bullshit, no missed episodes, and hopefully have a guest every week because I know people prefer the guest episodes to the solo cast, so... Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, favorite the video, and sub for more. I'll be doing a vid every week.